And uh, can you hear like, me now? Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, welcome you on uh, Sports Talk and the Success <laughs> Table. And uh, let's get it rolling with uh, how did you get involved with track as a kid, Mr. Mays? Well, uh, as a kid, I had uh, older brothers that ran track, and uh, you know, just like just like the younger sibling, I always always wanted to be like my older older brothers. My my oldest brother, he ran track uh, in a little town called Hereford, and he set all the school records. And then I had another brother who came along and broke his records, and then um, I came along and broke all of their records. <laughs> so <laughs> he did rivalry, huh? Yeah, yeah, but it worked out well for all. They were very, very supportive. Um, my uh, second brother, he uh, went to state and placed third, and so of course I had to try to outdo him. And I ended up winning state my my senior year in high school. And uh, followed him. He went to Tech, Texas Tech, and I went to to Texas Tech. Heck yeah, man! So uh, besides your brothers, who else were your sports role models? <clears throat> wow, uh, that's a great question, Zach. I had uh, several people that really helped me along the way. Uh, going going back to my high school track coach, who just uh, took a kid that you know I didn't really, I wasn't that good back then, and but he uh, he encouraged me. And then uh, went to college. Uh, my uh, my college coach, Corky Oglesby, um, at Texas Tech, was just a great mentor and, and, and coach. Uh, he did a lot for me as far as um, discipline and getting me mentally in, in shape. And then I met a guy at a sports banquet named Jesse Owens, um, who at the time I was, I was a freshman and I was playing basketball and, and running track at Texas Tech. And I didn't, um, I mean, I wasn't even able to run as fast uh, my freshman year as I did the year before as a senior in high school. And so um, Jesse set me down. We had this one-on-one -on -one meeting. I'll never forget it. And uh, we started talking and, you know, I told him a little bit, little bit about myself. And he told me that he believes I have a God-given talent and that I should focus on track. And so, you know, when a guy like Jesse Owens tells you something like that, you know, you listen. So the next year I concentrated solely on track, listened to my coach, and uh, my times just started dropping, set the school record. And um, a really interesting story, and I'll be real quick about this, but we were able to uh, get invited to the Drake Relays, which is this huge track meet in, in Des Moines, Iowa. And they have this huge parade and everything before the meet. And so my coach and I, we were eating breakfast, and uh, we were, our hotel was on the parade route. So we, we decided to go out and watch the parade. And so um, hundreds of people lined the sides of the streets. And so we were there in front of our, our hotel, and here comes the Grand Marshal, and it was Jesse Owens. And so we were just, you know, we were kind of amazed that it, you know, he was there. And for some just slight chance, he turned over as his car drove by and, and saw me in the crowd. And keep in mind, this was a year ago since I since I met him. And uh, I was running in a special invitational race that evening. And so he looked over me, pointed to me and said, good luck tonight, Jam. And that's my nickname that we, you know, we, he, he knew me by. And I looked at coach and we looked at each other. And it's like, did he just say good luck? You know, because, you know. Jesse Owens, he uh, speaks to hundreds of thousands of people, you know, throughout the year during his tours and everything. But he uh, he remembered me, you know, a little, little guy from a town called Hereford, Texas. And that really inspired me. I went out that, that evening and just uh, set a new school record and won the race and just was ecstatic. You Heck know? yeah, man. So uh, you mentioned the <laughs> basketball story. I read a little bit about that before our interview. <laughs> How do you think your sports career would have gone if you would have picked basketball over track? Oh gosh, I you know I was I was pretty good in high school. Um, I you know we won our district and went on to regionals, and I was the MVP. But uh, when when college is a different game, I was uh, kind of the big man in high school, tall, played forward. But in, in college, I, I was a guard. Uh, we had a good team, so I didn't get a whole lot of playing time. Um, I, you know, I think that with my determination, I would have been an okay player. Um, I, I in, in track and field, I was able to become a three-time All-American. That wouldn't have happened in, in basketball. I was able to set the school record, which lasted for almost a quarter of a century. Um, you know, I was able to uh, 
travel and, and basically see the world through track and field, I, I know that my skills in basketball would, wouldn't have afforded me those opportunities, but um, I'm happy with the choice that I made. Heck yeah, man. So uh, before every race <laughs> at Texas Tech, how did you, how did you calm yourself before the storm, man? Uh, you know what? I had a good coach that uh, kind of kept me in focus. He kept everything simple. His name was Corky. And uh, <laughs> Corky would tell me the same. He would tell me the same thing before each race. You know, it, 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 our race strategy was real simple. He'd just say, James, get out fast, lean to the left, and be the first one back. And that was it, you know. And that was a strategy that worked pretty well for me. <laughs> just kept it simple. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> So, uh, James, life after track for you, how have you applied the trials and tribulations of track to your personal life? Like the, the mentality of being the first to the finish line, being the first one around the track, doing miles at a time. A great question, Zach. Um, you know, in, in, in track and field, you you have to be determined. You have to believe in yourself. Um, you have to, uh, you know, go against the odds at, at, at a lot, you know, a lot of time. I, I ran against world record holders. And I would get in a race, you know, with the eye of the tiger, you know, understanding that they're, that they're who they are, but I'm going to give them a battle. I'm going to bring the battle to them. You know, and it's always like that. You just, you, you go through um, your challenges with determination, um, and that, that has helped me. I, I, and I, I look back on a lot of the things that I, that I did in track and field. And I said, well, if I can handle that, then I can, I can handle this. You know, if I can, if I can do a workout, I, I did a workout with Edwin Moses one time and it was the hardest workout in my life, but I, I stayed at it and I did it. And, you know, um, if I could do that, if I can work out with, with a guy like that, if I can uh, compete against, uh, Sebastian Coe, who was a world record holder, Steve Ovet. Um, Steve Cram, you know, guys like that, Johnny Gray. If I can compete against guys like that, the toughest guys in the world, uh, you know, I can face life's difficulties as well. You know, I, with, the, with the help of God, uh, I, I can be determined to, uh, to face the things that I have to face. For sure, man. So, James, do you, do you continue on uh, the track? Of, you still run? <laughs> I do still run. Uh, I'm not, not, not at the intensity that I used to, but I, I, you know, I get out, I have a course here near my house that it's about a three mile course and I try to hit that. Uh, I'm not going to say every day, but, uh, I, it's hit and miss about right now. I'm about two, two, three times a week. I'm doing a lot of, um, exercising, you know, push ups, sit ups, leg work. Um, you know, eventually I may want to get into, um, a master's division and, and run again, but, I've, I've tried that for a couple of years and every time I get almost to that point, you know, my mind is ready. You know, my mind says, you know, let's go for it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get on the track and I'll start thinking, you know, I'm back in the, my, you know, my world-class days and the mind says that, but the body says, no, we're not there yet. And so um, I've suffered some injuries, hamstrings, things like that. So I've got to train a little smarter, uh, but I, I enjoy getting on the track. You know, that's kind of like where I, I'm like a, a duck in the water as far as, being on, on, on the track. No, I love doing that. Definitely. What, uh, the 5k type of deal. Are you into that sort of stuff or the heck to the no? <laughs> uh, I need to be, I, you know, I, I think my career would have been much better if I had concentrated more on things like that 5k. Uh, but I was more of kind of a 400 meter, 800 meter type guy. Long distances scared me. <laughs> but I did I did a few turkey trots here in, in Dallas, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's always a good idea to to load up with the mileage um, along with with the weightlifting. But I think those things would have helped me a lot more as as a as a, a runner. Definitely stamina, man. Stamina, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, James, I'll leave you on this, man. Where can my audience find you on social media? I am on Facebook. Um, I haven't really gotten anything, uh, done anything as far as Twitter, but right now I'm on Facebook and uh, welcome to, to see and visit people yes, on that sir. as well. Definitely, man. Well, James Mays, it's been a blessing to have you on our show and we'd welcome you back for another one, my friend.